Trump, 51%. This is the Des Moines Register and NBC News poll. DeSantis, 19%. Nikki Haley, 16 Vivek Ramaswamy at 5 Chris Christie at 4 What stands out to me here is since the end of October, Trump has gained 8 points. DeSantis has gained 3. Vivek has gained 1. Everybody else has basically stayed the same. So... Trump is in an incredibly strong spot for him to be up this much. Now, I think DeSantis will finish in second place. But the question is going to linger, and it's going to remain the same. How long is Nikki Haley, how long are Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis both going to stay in this race? Because I think it's clear that Vivek and Chris Christie, at least as we sit 35 days out, appear to not be major factors in winning in Iowa, or to a certain extent, New Hampshire. So I think both those guys are going to be gone sooner rather than later. And I think the question is, if Trump wins, and Trump wins by anything near this margin, this thing is over, right? If Trump gets 45% of the vote or 50% of the vote, and the next closest person is 20-some-odd points behind him, I think it's going to be hard to argue that we've got a real race. So we'll see what happens there. Um, Also, we got a CNN poll of Michigan, which has Trump up 10, uh, and a CNN state poll of Georgia, which has uh, him uh, up five. And so to me, a lot of people out there are like, oh, it's a conspiracy. I don't buy into the polls. There's no way Trump is leaving. I disagree. Because there was also a Wall Street Journal poll that came out. And I think the race is basically who's able to do the job, who's mentally and physically fit to do the job. Trump has a 48-14 lead over Joe Biden, 34-point lead. This is about Joe Biden not having the mental or physical fitness to be president more than it's about Trump or anybody else. I've been saying for a couple months now, I think Vivek Ramaswamy, Nikki Haley, Ron DeSantis, or Donald Trump would all beat Joe Biden. And I think probably the biggest story here, uh, to me, that stands out as we, as we analyze all of this is Biden's weakness. When we started the campaign a year ago, when Trump announced that he was going to be running, the story was, hey, uh, who can beat Biden? Who's the strongest option to beat Joe Biden? I think that's changed. Because now I think the story is everybody kind of presumes that Biden would lose, I think. And so who the Republicans pick is secondary because Biden is such a bad candidate. And so some people out there are like, oh, the, this is a conspiracy. The polls aren't real. Don't, I disagree, right? If every poll is saying the same thing, I think it's telling us the story, and you should pay attention to it. It's that Biden's very weak. Now, if the polls end up tightening and it ends up like a two or three point difference, then okay, like that's like a tight basketball game or a tight football game. It could go either way. Right now, what's happening is Trump is pulling away. And I think one reason he's pulling away is because the lawfare is not working. I think Democrats gambled. That if they brought charges with Jack Smith and they brought charges on the classified documents and they brought charges on New York City paperwork uh, disputes and Atlanta brought charges related to the electors there and everything else, that Trump would be harmed. I think the opposite's occurring. I think Trump's been strengthened. And I think most people are seeing this as a political hit job. And that's why, and I'll talk about this more in detail tomorrow, but that's why Jack Smith trying to accelerate his appeal is so important. Democrats are desperate to try to get a conviction on Trump because I think they recognize that otherwise they're going to lose. And I don't think they're going to be able to get more than one case complete. And increasingly, I don't even think they're going to be able to get that case complete because I think Trump has got very valid arguments about presidential powers in the Washington, D.C. case. I actually think that the strongest case out there is South Florida over classified document retention. But that case is certainly not going to be resolved, I don't think, uh, before we get to November's election. And so I think increasingly Jack Smith is seeing this time issue, and I think he's panicked 
because I think he's recognizing that getting the race, uh, getting the race impacted by the case is actually becoming more and more complicated. It appears that the Supreme Court is poised to knock out two of the four charges, a felony and a misdemeanor, that Jack Smith brought against Donald Trump that's scheduled to go to trial March 4th in Washington, D.C., relating to Jan 6th. And I talked about yesterday how the Supreme Court had the ability, just based on its schedule, to really bump the Trump cases almost off the board. Now, they could throw them all out, right? And I think that's what they should do. The Supreme Court should look at these charges. They should say, this is ridiculous. These are not crimes. Uh, And the president has the power to act as he did. They already tried to to remove him from office under the impeachment proceedings. That failed. That's what I think the Supreme Court would do if they were being 100% honest. And maybe they still are going to do that. But to me, the biggest takeaway here is that There's no way this March 4th trial date is happening. Uh, We're about to go through the holidays. We come back. It'll be right after uh, the new year. Nothing is going to happen there. It's going to take months to seat a jury in Washington, D.C. This ambitious March 4th trial date is impossible. I just, I don't see any way based on what the Supreme Court is doing right now. And if you question me trying to analyze the calendar... If you question that, Jack Smith basically is acknowledging it by begging the Supreme Court to review all of these legal issues on an expedited basis so he can try to rush these cases through. I just, I don't see any way it's happening. And I'm even more confident of that today than I was yesterday based on the review of uh, these charges. Now, I suppose it's possible that Hunter Biden... Uh, sorry, that, uh, that, that Joe Biden's Department of Justice could decide, oh, we're only going to prosecute on two of these issues. Uh, maybe they could decide, hey, actually, we're going to try to go do the confidential documents trial down in South Florida first instead of this, uh, this case that's going on in Washington, D.C. They don't have as good of a jury, though, so I don't do, think they'll do that. Increasingly, I am starting to believe that there's not going to be any cases that are decided against Donald Trump before the election happens in November of next year. That is, based on the way that these legal machinations are playing out, I think it's going to be incredibly difficult for there to be any resolution of them. Why does that matter? Well, Jack Smith is trying to rush this through because he wants to try to get a felony conviction to harm Donald Trump's chances of winning the 2024 election. That's the reality here. The party that claims they're so concerned about the sanctity of our democratic process is trying to put the chief political opposition of the sitting president, Donald Trump, in prison for the actual presidential campaign. I mean, that's what's going on. This is banana republic crazy level stuff. And if the Supreme Court really wanted to apply the law, they would just toss this. I think the best case scenario is everybody knows the allegations against Trump. If you think they're disqualifying for him holding elective office, then don't vote for him. If you think that they aren't and you analyze Trump v. Biden and decide that you think Trump would be the better choice, then go vote for Trump. I I just, I don't see this as some massive issue that has to be resolved by the federal government and it requires us to break 240 years of past precedent. To me... This is a relatively easy decision. Let the voters decide. Let Joe Biden come out and say Donald Trump is Hitler and he's going to take away everybody's abortion rights and he's going to end democracy in America if he's elected. And if people believe it and we have fair and and honest elections, then Joe Biden has a chance to win. And also Joe Biden can say, hey, I've been a great steward of the economy. I've done incredible work, like all this stuff, right? If he's the nominee, which I still don't think he will be. And Trump can come out and say, I can do a better job and let the American public decide. But increasingly, it seems to me highly unlikely that there's any way March 4th trial date happens in Judge Chutkin's courtroom and that instead we move into the summer, maybe even the fall. And if I were betting right now, Uh, I would drop, given where we are right now, 
I would drop to one on the how many cases will be decided before the 2024 presidential election. I would drop to 0.5. I think the over-under would have to be 0.5 at this point based on how these criminal uh, proceedings are trans, uh, taking place. I think I would drop to 0.5 how many of these criminal trials are going to be completed before we get to the election in November of 2024. Before that, I was at one. Earlier this year, I was kind of wobbling right around one and a half. If I were setting the over-under on completed criminal trials against Donald Trump, as I sit here to you talking on, what's today, December 13th, I would set the over-under at 05 and I would be inclined to potentially take the under right now. I think there could be some juice on the under. 